Hey guys, today I wanna to share with you my process for painting these beautiful pink peonies. This is from my own reference photo and I don't usually paint flowers, but I was super inspired to paint this one. I did use an aqua board for this painting, which is just a surface that is hard and it's great for painting detailed things like flowers. So I started by testing out my colors on a test sheet of paper just to see which ones I wanted to use from my Sennelier palette of 48 colors. And my main colors for this project were actually cobalt violet light hue, bright red, rose opera, and a couple of other colors like the Naples yellow and forest green. And I did use raw sienna for some of the warm hints inside of those flower petals. So I started with really light transparent layers, especially focusing in on the yellow hues at first and then going over them with light washes, mostly of this cobalt violet light hue. I did make sure I did a very careful pencil sketch beforehand because this is such a detailed subject matter. I wanted to make sure I captured all of those petals and got them all in the right place. So I started with super light tinted washes and then from there I started to layer over the top of them with more darkly pigmented color. This is such a process of patience and just really seeing it through. Sometimes it's easy to get lost in those details, but if you have your reference photo right next to you, you can look rapidly back and forth between your photo and your painting. It's easy to keep track of where you are because each petal is its own unique shape, its own unique structure. And I absolutely loved getting lost in this process. The flower on the left is quite a bit lighter in value. You can see it's a lighter pink overall. And so I used much more wet and wet tinted washes and just kind of dropped in darker colors in between the petals to produce the layered effect, but also to get the colors to blend naturally on the surface. For the center of the flower, I used this color called Jean Sophie or Yellow Sophie. It's a Sennelier yellow, kind of a primary yellow. And then for some of the darker shadow shapes within the petals of the flowers itself, I used a combination of permanent magenta and cobalt violet light hue for those darker areas in the petals. And the flower on the right is actually quite a bit more vibrant pink in its colors. So for that one, I did use more of a combination of my rose opera and cobalt violet light hue. This was just a matter of testing out those colors ahead of time and trying to get as close to the reference photo as I could. When it comes to really brilliant colors, it's so important to test them out so that you know exactly what you want to use before you go in and so that you have an overall color harmony with your entire painting. It would be easy to add kind of a bunch of different colors to the painting and it would look a little bit disjointed. So really stick with a palette of just limited number of colors and go with that for the entire painting. Within some of these shadows on the right side of the flower, you can see that there's a yellow tone in those shadows. And that's because some of the light from the yellow stamen are bouncing into the shadows in the petals. And so for that, I used my raw sienna to produce more of a yellowish pink in those shadow tones of the petals. Really carefully avoid the highlights around the petals. If you want it to look three dimensional, use the white of the paper for your whites. It's gonna look just awesome and it requires a little extra effort and preparation and certainly an accurate drawing to achieve that, but it's totally worth that extra effort. For the center of the flower, I used more alizarin crimson for my dark red, and then I used the raw sienna to paint these little separations of the stamen. I tried not to be too particular about this. I was looking at my reference photo for guidance, but I wasn't painting every single little detail because it would have been really easy to get lost in that. And I don't particularly prefer photographic realism when I'm painting. I want it to look like a painting. So I tried to make this painting a combination of tight realism and also some loose washy brush strokes Especially on these larger petals, you can use more of the belly side of the brush to push and pull the paint and to make it look really wonderful and painterly. Continue to add more layers over the top of your flower petals and just trust the process. If you go through several stages in your painting where you think it looks really ugly, that's totally normal. This is something about watercolor that the first few layers just look a little bit flat and it can be hard to think, okay, I need to stick with this, but just be patient, trust that process. Here where you have the convergence of the two flowers pushed up against each other, I found it to be somewhat complex. These petals were really thin as they were layered on top of each other. So I had to really slow down and focus on my reference photo. And then as I got to these broader petals at the bottom, they were much more shadowed and a lot of subtle variety within the colors and values. So I did use a lot of wet and wet layers and then wet and dry over the top to build up those values. And I used a lot of bright red in the flower on the right to kind of boost that orangey tone within the petals. So the colors were definitely different from flower to flower. 
For the shadow tones, I mixed in a little bit of dark blue and alizarin crimson to produce those deep dark shadows. And with many of these flower petals, they kind of go from shadow to mid-tone to highlight. So I was constantly adjusting my values by dipping my brush in the water to remove any excess paint and to thin it down as I moved from shadow to light. Now I want to let you guys know that if this video is moving too fast, it is available in real time through my Watercolor Mastery membership. Just head over to emilyolsonart.com where you can check out all the tutorials that are currently available. There's over a hundred fully narrated real time tutorials, which all include a reference photo and downloadable line drawing. So if you want to try and paint along with me, this exact painting, it is on my membership site. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can check that out. All right, with this flower on the right, I finished it up with a few light washes of pink. And then I really painted quite directly with this. I went in with bright colored paint right away, wet on dry for many of these flower petals. With the ones that are more in the light, I did take a more subtle layered approach. You can always adjust your technique based on the values and the shapes that you're seeing. It doesn't have to be the same technique for every single part of the painting. And what fun would that be, right? So mix it up and have fun with your techniques. On the lighter colored petals, I went ahead and layered some more color over the top and added some dark shadows to finish up the flowers. And then for a final touch at the very end, I used a forest green to paint some background colors. For the forest green details at the end, I used a angled shader brush and just added some energetic final brush strokes. Be decisive with these and if you want it to look loose and spontaneous, just have fun with it. So there's the finished peony painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial. I hope to see you over at my membership site. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.